guys, how's it going? It's Baggins here. Now, some of you may already be aware there has been a new patch that has dropped on the PC. This is the uh, leaderboards ranked patch that we were talking about in the last video with the Blood Moon and stuff like that. Um, and it has now officially arrived on the PC. And uh, for those of you asking, when is this gonna be on Xbox? Probably sometime around next week. Uh, I don't have any official statements from Zavian, nor am I affiliated with them. But based on how stuff has gone in the past, it generally seems that the patch comes out on PC. And then within a week, uh, it will be on Xbox. So probably sometime Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of next week, we can expect this to drop onto the Xbox. Now, rather than just do a full gameplay video, I just wanted to do a quick cover on what is in this patch exactly and what you guys can be excited for. So the first thing we have to show off and possibly the most exciting thing about this patch is the leaderboard. So there's two separate leaderboards. There's one for solo and there's one for co-op. This footage was taken early on. I played a bit of the patch while the cameras weren't rolling. I uh, got myself into the second spot in silver. Right now we're sitting on diamond though. I think I'm somewhere in the top 10. We might have got knocked out, but uh, the way the leaderboards work is basically it takes your top 10 best games of the total season. Uh, we're not sure how long a season lasts yet. Maybe we say it's a month or two. So within those two months, you play 300 games. Your 10 best games out of those 300 will be the ones that are counted on the leaderboard. Right now it does seem that it very heavily favors placement so if you get a first place victory i.e you're the last man standing or a second place victory you do net yourself a lot of points i think first place is like 300,000 points second place is something like 250,000. you seem to break into the diamond section when you get over 2 million 2 million 500,000 points so if we say that over the the 300 games that you played on that month 10 of them you came first you were the last man standing then you probably will get into diamond that's how it seems to be currently anyway. I may be missing some stuff, but as I say, it does seem to be very heavily based on how you place. Kills, damage, and time alive does factor into it a little bit, but a lot of the points, as I say, do come from that placement. Outside of leaderboards, outside of the ranked gameplay, oh, and a quick note as well on that. There isn't a separate queue for ranked. Uh, maybe there's some sort of misconceptions about how it works. It just takes your 10 best games from quick play. There's no separate queue for ranked. Breaking up the queues is something the culling has done in the past. And it, it ultimately just led to games popping less often because there was two different, you know, queues that you could get into. And the player base isn't as high enough to be able to warrant that and make sure it works. So it's just quick play that it will take your stats from. Now, outside of leaderboards, we do also have some new perks coming in, four new perks to be exact. There's one in utility, one in survival, one in combat, and one in movement. Now, all of these perks have very big upsides, but they also have very big downsides as well. So they'll give you something powerful, but in return, they'll take away something. So the first example that we have, as you can see on the screen right now, is Berserker. Now, Berserker increases your base damage, all of your damage by 10%. So that's a pretty good stat, but as a result of getting that 10% extra damage, you can't heal after you kill someone. So you've probably noticed, even if you don't have Cannibal on, when you kill someone, you do get a chunk of health back and a chunk of stamina. Well, with Berserker, you will get no health back now when you kill someone, unless you run the Cannibal perk. So Berserker and Cannibal does seem to be a good combo. Uh, but it does leave you susceptible to being vultured. Vulturing meaning that when you get into a close fight and uh, you c you come out of it just about winning with like 20 HP and the other person's dead, somebody then swoops in from the side and fights you with 100 HP with a full bow and stuff and you're there with barely any health left after this good fight. Uh, so that's what vulturing is and uh, as I say, Berserker can leave you susceptible to that. So. Good perk, but a pretty big downside. Depends if you have a good uh, flight plan or if you're confident fighting when you only have 20 HP. The second perk we have to show off is Tanky. This perk decreases the melee damage that you receive by 10%, but increases the range damage you receive by 10%. So on PC, this is not really a great perk because there's so many bow users. Uh, the bow meta is very much alive on PC. The big game airdrop that gives you the compound bow is probably one of the most popular airdrops on the PC right now. So taking 10% extra range damage just means you're gonna die to compound bows more often. Uh, this would have been a pretty terrible perk on the previous patch on the Xbox when the bows were broken, uh, taking even more damage from that double damage bow. But right now I see, I see this being a pretty solid perk. Um, I think bows and guns aren't really used as much as they would be on PC on Xbox. I will be trying this out and giving it a go on Xbox. I see some uh, some promise of a good perk here. Next up in the movement speed slot, we do have Jogger. Uh, Jogger increases your movement speed only while you have your fists out by 10%, but it means you will take a 10% flat damage increase on all damage you take. Uh, so this isn't just when you have your fists out, this is when, when you have anything on you. So. 
Jogga, it's a uh, 10% movement speed is certainly very powerful. Will help you catch up those people who are running away with that uh, extended stamina if you get to your fist. So the idea is that maybe you run backpacker. So say something like you have caltrops on your fifth slot, you throw them down. Now you've got your fists out. So after the caltrops wear out, you do have an empty slot. You switch to your fists while you're catching them up. Just when you're about to hit them in the back, you switch back to a weapon again, and uh, it effectively allows you to catch up everybody other than those that have explosive runs have Jogger themselves, or have crippled you. So Jogger is a bit of a weird one because taking 10% extra damage isn't really something you want to do if you can avoid it. 10% movement speed is very nice, but the fact that you have to have your fists equipped does uh, make it a bit awkward to use because there is a bit of an animation when it comes to swapping out weapons, so it might, might mean that you have to take extra hits. If somebody turns around and suddenly decides to fight you when you're switching from your fist to your weapon, you might take a free swing that has 10% extra damage on it. So Jogger is a, it's an interesting one, and we will be giving it a go, but I don't see too much promise in this perk. And finally, the last perk we have, which is even more niche than Jogger, arguably, is Tight Grip. So this is a utility perk, and it says your ranged weapons can't be disarmed, but your movement speed is reduced by 5%. The best use for this perk I can see is when you have an SMG. Of course, I've always talked in the past about how SMGs are only really effective at very close range, but the problem with being close range with an SMG is if that someone hits you, you, uh, you drop your weapon on the ground. So this may enable a gun meta to be pretty strong. If you can get up close and personal with that revolver, with that rifle, with the SMG, it's pretty guaranteed that you'll hit because that, that opponent's right next to you. Um, and you'll generally be out DPSing them if you're doing, you know, 40 plus damage a second. But the payment for this is 5% reduced movement speed, which means in an event that you need to run away, you're not gonna be able to because they will catch you up. You can look at it as effectively giving all of your opponents speedy spear in that sense that you'll be 5% slower than them. So they're effectively 5% faster than you. Uh, so they'll always be able to catch you up if you run away. If you don't find yourself running away too much, this may be an interesting perk. I have, I did not give it a go in the patch yet. It seemed to be one of the less exciting perks out of the other four, but I can see some promise with this perk if you're able to effectively get an SMG reliably and stuff like that. We also have a bunch of new cosmetics coming in as well. A lot of summer themed cosmetics. So we have track tops and turtlenecks and uh, Oxford shorts, which are just called shorts in the actual menu and track shorts. So uh, the the track tops uh, <laughs> give, you, give your male character a bit of an interesting look. Maybe if it's getting a bit hot on the island, you could spot yourself a track top and make yourself uh, look as attractive as my character does here. Ooh la la. We also have the turtlenecks, which can help you uh, look full dad mode if you want to do that. The track shots do give you a nice range of trainers to go with your uh, attire. And the shots uh, have a bunch of uh, interesting patterns on them. Little SMGs, some, some played patterns. Not the most exciting cosmetics, you know, there's no like special stuff really. But it's a welcome addition to the pool of what is already a pretty big collection of cosmetics on the culling. Probably one of the most exciting additions to the cosmetics, at least for me, is there's a bunch of new victory celebrations. Uh, the victory celebration is the little animation that plays when you win at the end of the game. Um, so previously we've always run fancy footwork, but I am uh, I am excited by some of these. I do like the way over the shoulder looks, so we'll probably be picking up that one first. There's eight new animations that have come in for the celebration that plays when you win a round. We also have two new events coming in as well. The Blood Moon, as we've talked about in the past, and there's also Boombox. Uh, Boombox is an interesting one, especially on the island. It seems to generally spawn in the late game, but it also happens in the mid game occasionally as well. A red crate will be dropped into the middle of the culmination with some warning that it's happening. And all across the map, red barrels will also be dropped in by drones as well. You won't be able to shoot the red barrels until they land on the ground, but the red barrels are there so you can make crafted explosives. Uh, of course, crafted explosives, one of the easiest ways to open up red crates. If you chuck an explosive at a red crate, it will open and give you the loot inside. Uh, generally giving you a tier 3, tier 4 weapon, sometimes body armor as well. Blood Moon, also very interesting, basically reveals all the enemies on the map. Uh, we've talked about it in the past, but just to quickly go over it, when you're playing team mode, uh, you can see a teammate through walls and stuff in the distance, they have that blue outline around them. Well basically Blood Moon does that, but it's for everybody in the game, and rather than a blue outline, it gives them a red outline. So you can see where the next nearest player is to you, and you can decide whether you want to hunt them or run away from them. Of course, they can see you as well though, so they can maybe intercept you. Or if they see you're making your way towards them, they could maybe put traps down. Uh, but yeah, Blood Moon, uh, a fun one, and Boombox also pretty fun as well. And yeah, that about does it for this video, guys. The most exciting things in the patch definitely being the leaderboard, the new perks, and the new events are pretty cool as well. 
Uh, the cosmetics, uh, you know, I can take them, I'll leave them. They're fun, but they're not like, wow, overwhelming cool. I do like the victory animations uh, quite a lot though. We'll definitely be buying those first with our cool credits when we get them. And yeah, that about does it. So uh, if you enjoyed this video, guys, make sure you go ahead and click the like button. If you want to see more of my culling content, make sure you go ahead and click subscribe. And I'll see all you guys in the next video. Two, to the one, to the one, to the three. Always protect your ABC. They were doing something strange in the restroom stalls. I don't believe my eyeball. Three, to the one, to the one, to the three. Your drop are now available for delivery. That player did not look clean. Your enemy.